Hello and welcome to another special bulletin for JW Watch. Jehovah's Witnesses in Norway received a huge blow on Monday, March 4th, when the Oslo District Court ruled against them, upholding the decisions of the Norwegian government and the state administrator of Oslo and Viken to deregister the group as a religion and deny its state funding of approximately one and a half million euros annually. In addition to their own legal expenses, believed to number into hundreds of thousands of US dollars, the organisation has been ordered to pay the state's legal expenses. And bear in mind, this case was never about acknowledging the existence of Jehovah's Witnesses in Norway or their right to preach, but rather their official registration as a religion and the financial kickbacks associated with this official status. For more background on this story, and to avoid any need for me to repeat myself, please watch an earlier bulletin titled, Is Norway Attacking Jehovah's Witnesses for Context? Suffice to say, regardless of whether Jehovah's Witnesses end up appealing the verdict, it is a correct one, despite efforts to claim otherwise by cult apologists like Massimo Introvigne and his organisation Cessna, the Centre for Studies on New Religions. On Cessna's Bitter Winter propaganda website, the group gave the following response to the verdict. All human organisations have what sociologists call exit costs. By leaving a demanding but well-paid job, I may gain more freedom but lose a good salary. The loss of the salary is my exit cost. Shunning is a typical exit cost. A spouse that decides unilaterally to divorce and to marry a different partner may be shunned by the abandoned ex-spouse, perhaps even by children. Members of a political party who quit and join a political organisation with the opposite ideology may be shunned as traitors by their former comrades. Several religions, including Islam and branches of ultra-Orthodox Judaism, treat apostates in a less charitable way than the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Norwegian judge's argument is that to avoid the exit costs, we are compelled to remain in a religious organisation we may no longer believe in and are thus denied our right to leave it that is enshrined in the European Convention on Human Rights. But by applying the same argument, one can argue that marriage or political parties are also institutions that violate the rights of those who want to divorce or change political affiliation, since the exit costs may make them reluctant to leave. The fallacies in this exit costs argument are glaringly obvious, but why don't we just briefly spell them out? If I leave a well-paying job for whatever reason, I can still come home to my family. I can pick up the phone to my mother or father and gain advice or comfort from them. The same is true of those leaving a political party. No former job or political party has the power to weaponize my loved ones against me. In the breakup of a marriage, Ex-spouses or children are free to continue contact with whomever instigated the divorce without fearing any existential threat of annihilation at an impending apocalypse. Any decision to shun is a strictly personal one and not something mandated for them by a distant group of leaders. And suggesting that the cruelty of mandatory shunning is justified because some other religions have it worse, is what's known as a bandwagon logical fallacy. In other words, appealing to the fact that others do something as a form of validation for that thing. As a side note, in 2016 I interviewed ex-Muslim Imtiaz Shams, founder of the organisation Faith to Faithless, on this channel, and he told me that in his opinion, 
the psychological torture of shunning is worse for an apostate to bear than threats of death or physical violence. In terms of the UK and also in the West, yeah. there is a risk of things like honor-based violence. So, right. you know, we've dealt with uh, people who've been at risk from their families, um, again, often girls, not always girls. Um, for example, if you're a guy and you're out of the closet, so to speak, um, there's been cases where people are threatened by other people and it's a very bro type thing like bro you didn't say this about my religion um, I'll hurt you kind of thing so that happens but um, what I often try to unearth which isn't just about the physical violence but often the emotional violence you know like this idea that you can be kicked out you can be shunned by your family or your community which I'm sure you guys have mm. probably just as much or more experience with than we do uh, but the, the, that's almost just as bad because it can damage you Sometimes right. worse than the physical. So the emotional abuse you think is as, as bad as the physical abuse? Sometimes worse. Yeah. Because the physical abuse, someone hits you once, you run away, mm. that's done. Emotional violence can stay with you for decades, you know? Right. And, and we deal with a lot of people with mental health difficulties that come from being shunned, being kicked out, yeah. um, being told you're nothing, having narcissistic family members, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. It's unclear how Jehovah's Witnesses in Norway will respond to this latest setback. In January last year, JW.org posted positive news from earlier in the case, so it remains to be seen whether they will now post about this negative development, and if so, what if any spin they will put on it. In terms of options, the organisation could well double down and appeal the verdict, but further defeats, perhaps in higher courts, could only serve to raise more awareness internationally of the wrongfulness of shunning. Ultimately, Jehovah's Witnesses find themselves on the wrong side of history on this issue, and their only path to securing credibility and the rights and privileges afforded to all religions is to eliminate their cruel, harmful policies, particularly that of using family relationships as emotional blackmail to keep people inside an organisation they would otherwise leave. Anyway, that's all I have for you. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates as things progress. And as always, thank you for watching.